Hey guys, this is Old Time Radio again, and uh, today I want to show you a cool little utility that I found not too long ago. Uh, it's a Java model loader for Neverwinter Nights. Um, it uh, is kind of interesting in that unlike the BioWare model viewer, um, it will uh, it'll uh, allow you to see all of the animations on a model, um, and so it's it'll also show you uh, emitters in action, uh, though it's a little bit limited, um, but it's it's kind of handy if you're working on emitters or if you're trying to kind of get a quick idea about how a model is put together. Okay, so first, um, after you unpack the archive to a folder, you're going to see a number of different files, and one of them is going to be this nwm bat file. Okay. Uh, to run this, you need to have uh, Java 3D installed, and there's also a link to the latest versions of Java 3D. Uh, if you have any problems with that, just go ahead and write me, and I'll make sure that you get hooked up with the right uh, distro for it. Okay, so I've just copied uh, the shortcut here to my desktop, and I'm going to launch it now. Now, you're going to see this DOS window pop up, okay? And let's just take a quick look at that. Uh, the DOS window here is going to let you know a bunch of information about uh, what's going on. Basically, it's like a debug window. So right now, we just have the fact that it loaded up, um, the models that it saw in the directory. Uh, to view any models, they have to be in the same directory as the program itself. Okay? And also, if there's any issues with models or if it skips any information, that'll also be in here, and we'll go over that in just a, a minute or so. Okay? So the main UI of this is really simple. It's four windows. Uh, on the left hand side here is your models window and this will just simply list the models that are available to you uh, that are in that folder uh, with the program. The display window where everything's actually shown. An animations window where every one of the animations on the model base is listed and can be accessed. And then the NWN control panel window which is sort of like a configuration uh, window. Uh, one really important point about the uh, NWN control panel window is that uh, some really good bits of it are going to be hidden down here. So uh, you want to get used to grabbing the window and moving it up just a little bit. And you can see these extra tabs, the geometry, appearance, and animation tabs. And uh, these will give you some, uh, give you the ability to access some of the other features of this, which make it kind of nice. Um, okay, so let's start off by looking at one of our models here. It's a deer. So we just click on it. It loads the model. And uh, here we see the deer and the animations that are on that deer. Uh, it's shiny because there is an environment map that it applies to the models. So let's go ahead and uh, look at some of these uh, configuration options and turn that, that off. Okay. So let's see. It's going to be, here we go. Under appearance, you have the reflection map. Okay. And by clicking that enabled and turning it off, we'll get to more of our standard deer looking deer doesn't have an environment map on it environment map on it um, you can also once the environment map is enabled though you can uh, kind of fiddle around with how the environment map is applied and how the texture is uh, mixed with it okay but we're going to turn that off right now uh, also the main texture itself can be modified depending on how the lights blend with it okay so this is going to give you something that's a little bit flatter uh, and a little easier to look at if you're just uh, maybe wanting to make sure that your texture came across uh, correctly and is mapped okay onto the uh, to the creature, um, and we can turn off the texture entirely and just have a uh, we can just have the the bare model here. Okay. <clears throat> also, you have control over how the polygons are displayed, whether they're filled polygons, which is what we typically deal with, or whether they're lines. Okay or whether they're points, and um, the points is sort of deba deba debatably useful, uh, but I guess it serves some purpose. Um, so I'm going to go back to fill, and then finally cull faces. This is really not that important. It just allows you to, to cull the front-facing polygons, um, the back-facing polygons, which you're typically going to want to have it, uh, have it uh, set up for, or none. You really don't see much of a difference there. Okay, so I leave it on callback. That's the default, I believe. Uh, so to display an animation, you just click on the animation and it'll play at once. Okay. Okay. And so let's take a look at the animation tab, which will allow us to change some of the ways that those are done. So first, you can set the scale. 
uh, for the animation if you want it to play really fast. So here's our walk. Okay. Then you're going to uh, lower the speed or lower the scale to say one tenth of the time. After we do that and we hit set, you'll notice that it's playing its pause animations very quickly, 10 times as fast. Okay. To bring it back to normal, we just bring it to 1.0. Okay. And then to make it slower, we make it a, put a bigger number in there. And now it's Play, pay, pull, playing it back more slowly. Okay. Uh, loop animations. Okay, so the way animations are displayed here is once uh, you click on something, it plays it once, <clears throat> and then if you click on it again, it's not going to do anything. You got to click on another animation before you can click back on uh, to see the previous one. So to get around that, you click loop animation. Okay, and then when you click on an animation like walk, for instance, it's just going to keep playing that over and over and over again. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's still animated um, without us having to do anything. It's because there are some default animations. If you click on the display under default animations, it'll show you which one it's using. These, it's just going to kind of go through and play these and give you an, just a general idea what the creature's looking like. Um, uh, when it's just standing there, or really what it would look like in game. Uh, if you want to change the default animations, uh, which always wind up getting played after any animation you select, so see here, see how it goes back to the defaults? Um, all you have to do is select uh, one or more animations, and then click Set. Okay, so now when I click Walk here, it's going to do the walk, then it's going to go right to the run, okay, because that's the default animation, okay? And if you ever need to figure out what that was, just click display and it'll bring you right back. It'll show you what the uh, default animations are. So I'm just going to set it at C pause and uh, C ready. Just use the control uh, key to uh, select more than one of those. And then I'm going to set those. Okay. And then if you want to look at an animation um, uh, from beginning to end, kind of like one frame at a time, what you'll do is you use this animation slider. So Let's grab the walk, okay, and then when we grab and move the animation slider, you know, actually it'll, it'll, it'll take whatever animation is playing at the time and it will allow you to move through it from front to back. So let's do that again, but in this case, let's set the walk as the default. Run, okay, and now, now we can move through the uh, the walk forwards and backwards, and so if you're making your own creatures, this can be kind of handy. Um, unfortunately, again, you you can't um, uh, click on an animation a second time and have it play again unless it's set to loop. Uh, you'll have to click on some other animation, okay? And once we're in this mode with the animation slider, all of the animations will um, be subject to the animation slider. They won't go back to normal. You'll have to load up another model, okay? Um, going over to the geometry tab here, uh, very handy little function called explode parts. Now at 1.0, it's just all the parts have the same, uh, uh, closeness to each other as they normally would. But if we change this to 2.0 and then click explode, bam, it, our deer explodes. Okay. And, uh, with the other functions in here, this can be really useful in kind of figuring out how a model is put together. So if you click on show skeleton, it's going to show you all of the nodes, okay? And uh, if you click on Show Labels, you can actually see what each one of those nodes is. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, so let's turn off Geometry by clicking Show Geometry, okay? And now we can just look at the nodes, okay? And if you need to, you can increase this Explode to explode it out even further. And you can also play animations with it um, to see how each of these nodes moves around. Okay, now the reason why it's not animating right now is because we haven't clicked on another um, creature yet, and so it's still locked in that animation slider uh, mode. So let's do that. If we click on Dire Cat, okay, here's our Dire Cat. And of course, again, to make it go uh, look a little bit more normal, we're going to take that environment map off. Okay, right, there you go. 
and then um, let's uh, go back here to show skeleton let's explode it okay and then uh, we'll turn off the geometry and then when we do our animations we'll be able to just see the nodes um, in motion okay uh, this works with placeables tiles all kinds of good stuff like that emitters um, okay so that's the basic usage we've gone through geometry uh, oh one la two last things I should say is uh, you can throw down the grid and the grid is going to give you just a regular grid that your objects on and then there's going to be a uh, a height bar which is uh, uh, three meters okay so let's switch back over to the or switch over to the human ABA okay and so this is a three meter bar uh, interesting thing about this viewer is that it will display um, it will display supermodels so if you have um, uh, a model which is supermodeled into others and those are also in ASCII and also in the directory um, you'll see all the animations here and you can choose from them. this is really handy um, now it doesn't do the best job of uh, playing the animations because in game they're played slightly differently um, but it'll give you a, a good idea at least how uh, you know how a, a particular animation looks okay so let's see one other thing is if we load up a tile here here's a little sample tile um, you're gonna notice uh, typically when you deal with tiles it might be difficult to orient them because of the way the camera set up so I'd like to turn on show skeleton so right there I can see the node and I have something I can orient to and then just holding in the right mouse button and dragging down I can see part of it uh, I can't see the rest of this because of the way the normals are facing so I'm gonna hold in the left mouse button and just rotate it okay and then the mouse wheel uh, zooms in and out. I'm going to turn off the labels and then the skeletons. Okay. Then there's another feature here called walk mesh. And if you do this, you're going to get a simple representation of the walk mesh. Okay. It's just really going to show you the verts in the walk mesh. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, here's some spell effects. And uh, there we go. Sometimes it's a little difficult to find these guys. As you can see, it does a pretty darn good job with uh, emitters. Okay, it cannot do point to point. Okay, but it does a really good job for all of your basic Neverwinter uh, emitters. Okay, and uh, if you ever get a little confused in here, it's always again real nice to just go to uh, show skeleton and then use that to orient the rest of them. Now, if you're familiar with this effect, for instance. Uh, when you go here to the atom, uh, there should be some lightning that shoots between these. Okay, but you don't see that, and that's because it does not deal or it does not uh, display these types of emitters. So it'll display your basic uh, emitter, but it won't do point to point stuff. Okay, so uh, that's something to be aware of. And then again, you get your little swarm of uh, bees or whatever, swarm of lights. When you click it, notice how it only does it once. When we click it again, nothing happens. So what we need to do is we need to switch to uh, let's say this one okay then come over here to the animation tab click on loop animation go back here and then when we click here it's just going to keep on doing it forever okay and if you need to again you can kick it into that mode with the animation slider and look at it frame by frame by frame uh, this will not do txi files uh, so that's important to think of uh, you can't you can't preview animated uh, textures in here but again um, this is um, a real nice, just kind of general model viewer. And uh, if it gives you an error, which it will sometimes uh, on certain models, you can usually tell by the error uh, what the problem is. Like sometimes um, it will say, uh, for instance, unexpected token beam in at line 10. Okay. You can actually go take, take a look in the ASCII model itself and... Uh, either change that or comment it out or delete the line and, and it probably will load it'll usually give you a pretty clear idea about what's going on if it can't load a model and again you can always check uh, at a much lower level right here in this window and uh, it'll give you a lot of feedback there so 
Anyway, I hope you uh, find it useful. It's an interesting tool. It's not perfect, but it has some handy features. And um, especially because you can preview emitters in it very easily. Uh, I, I like it. Um, and uh, I hope you get some use out of it. Thanks.